Hey guys, welcome to my official crash course for the Pydantic library in Python. By the end of this crash course, you will learn everything you need to know to get started with the Pydantic library in Python. You know, the Pydantic library is a very great library that is used for data validation in Python. And in the course of doing that, it helps you to detect early errors that will cause issues in your application. Also, the Pydantic library is very good when it comes to serializing data, so it's good for data serialization. So if it's your aim to transfer or store data, the Pydantic library will help you to serialize data which will present this data in formats where you can transfer or even uh, store them. Finally, if you are someone who works with API keys or environmental variables, the Pydantic library is very great in handling that through its setting management uh, feature. So we'll be exploring all of this in this particular crash course and uh, the code and everything we'll write in this particular crash course will be on my GitHub repository. The link will be in the video description. So just click on it and have access to the code. You can download it and uh, use it to learn. But make sure you start the repository for me and I know you are definitely going to do that. Uh, thank you. To start off, I'll be using Visual Studio Code and uh, I'll be using UV as my package manager. You guys can use pip if you are comfortable with it and any id of your choice so um i will just go ahead here and pull off this terminal and what i'll do is to type uv in it and this will um, create some files by default for me i'll get my main.py file right here and i'll be using this main.py file to write my code one thing you have to note is that the pydantic library doesn't come pre-installed with python so um you have to install it manually and to install it, we'll use UV. So just type UV add and the name Pydantic. So hit enter on this and this will add Pydantic. And um, I'll click yes here to use this particular virtual environment. So let me clear the terminal for now. And uh, I have this particular doc string here, which you can read. And it tells you more about what the Pydantic library is and the key aspects uh, of the library. So I think I talked about the data validation and data serialization and also deserialization. We we'll also look at the settings uh, management, which is also part of it. So these are the key features of the Pydantic library. Now that we've installed the library to import it, just type from Pydantic import base model. All right, so it's this base model that will help us to perform the data validation. So first of all, let's create some data using the base model and then we'll see how the base model validates data for us. So I'll put a comment here and call this data validation. And under this, I'm going to create a class. So to use the base model, you have to create a class. And let's say we are going to create a data for a user. So I'll call this user and this user will inherit from the base model. So just type the base model right here and uh, let's create some data for this user. So let's say this user will have an ID and this the data type for the ID, let's call it int. Okay, let's make it an integer. And also this user will have a name. So um, the name, let's make it a string. And finally, let's give it an age. So the user will also have an age and the age, let's give it integer, of course. So this let's start with this three you guys can add more but i'll just start with this three so that i can make everything short right so okay now that we have our user data let's create an instance uh, of this particular user so let's call this one user one right so user one is equal to an instance of our user and for this particular one let's give it a valid data okay so when we give it a valid data we expect pydantic not to catch any error or throw any error at us so the id here i'll give it an integer called one and um i'll give the name i'll call it Felix. i'll use my name of course and finally the age uh let me give it 90 okay he is a grandpa so let me give it age 90 and i'll go ahead and uh print user one so uh, let me quickly run this and you see on the terminal that we've got our user so we've got the data id is equal to one everything is equal to one the data is valid so pydantic is valid we got no errors okay all right now let's create another user okay let's call him user two and for that i'll copy this same thing and uh what i'm going to do is to paste it here but i'll call this guy user two and for user two we are trying to give it an invalid data so what i'll do id here instead of id being an integer I'll give ID, I'll, let, me, let me just call it invalid, okay? So 
we are creating an invalid data i'll call it invalid and let's print user 2 so that you can see how pydantic will catch the error automatically so when i print user 2 let me quickly run this and boom you can see pydantic have caught some error so we have what data validation error for user and you can read it right here so we said input should be a valid integer unable to pass string as an integer and it has given you the type okay the type should be integer by over here we are passing the type as a string so you can see how pydantic can catch these errors for you whilst you are writing your code and this will prevent uh, you from getting these errors in your production environment which you don't want okay you don't want that when users are using your app they will experience this type of error so pydantic is doing all the heavy lifting jobs for you and this is how you can use pydantic to uh validate your data it does this automatically you don't need to do it okay so anytime you use pydantic model and then you get an invalid data to tell you so that you are able to uh, correct it so yeah that's why we are getting that particular error and this is how you can use it to uh, validate data so what i'll do here is to comment this out and let's still have our user one and now we'll move on to how to use pydantic to perform uh, data serialization and I told you data serialization is nothing but just converting data in a format where you can send or store. Okay, so one popular format in which data is being stored or sent is in the JSON format. Okay, API keys, when you make some requests, it returns to you a JSON format. So let's see how Pydantic can easily help us to convert our data to a JSON format. Um, let me quickly print user one here so that we can see how user one looks after converting it or serializing it so let me print user one instead of user two and uh close this terminal rerun this again and now you can see how it looks so let's try to now serialize this into the json format so let me write here serialization the final code which you are going to get on github will be well commented okay so it's not going to be this version that will be well commented and explained so that you guys will understand so to serialize our data let's say for instance i want to serialize this user one let's store it in a variable called data underscore s which stands for data serialize and this will be equal to our user one and we can put dot here so when we put dot here we have a lot of methods we can use to serialize data first uh in the first version of pydantic we can just do user one dot json and uh that is it but this function unfortunately now is deprecated when you use it and you print it it works but they will tell you it is deprecated okay and deprecated just means uh this particular function is not being used anymore that means they have a more uh, accurate or efficient one so let's print data s and uh pydantic is going to throw us that error so let me run this and you can see we have it here. even though it has serialized the data for us but we have it here that the json method is deprecated so use model dump model underscore dump underscore json instead so instead of this we can just do user one dot model underscore dump underscore json okay and uh when we run this this will serialize our data for us so let me run this and you can see this is our original data which looks like this and now our data has been serialized into json format ready to be stored or even ready to be uh, sent via http request so you can see how easily you can use the pydantic library to serialize data just by calling this particular method all right now let's look at how we can uh, deserialize data so let's say now you have made some api requests and we know the response from apis are normally in json format but you want to deserialize that json format so that you can use it in your program or you can pass it through a pydantic model you can easily do that using the pydantic library so let's see how you can do that let's call this deserialization something like that i'll just copy this and paste it right here so deserialization to deserialize your data is very simple we already have a data which is serialized here which is called data s so now let's get another data uh d okay data underscore d we should stand for data deserialize so this is equal to we can use our user model okay so we can type user which is the user model we've created so user dot model underscore validate json okay so we can just type user dot model underscore validate json 
and here you pass in the serialized data for it to be deserialized so the serialized data we have is our data s and now if we go ahead to print our data underscore d it should uh, give us our original data which should look something like this or something that we have printed here so let me quickly run this and you can see this is our original data this is the data we've serialized and this is the same data we have deserialized so this is how you can use the pydantic library to simply perform uh, these actions you can see it's pretty much easy to serialize and deserialize data the final thing we'll be looking at is how to manage um, environmental keys using the pydantic library and to do that uh, we need to install another version of the pydantic library called uh, pydantic settings so just type uv add pydantic hyphen settings so when you add this this will help you to uh, manage your api keys or environmental keys so let me clear this and uh, over here i'll create a file to work with so i'll call this file dot env okay dot env and inside dot env here i'll have uh, some dummy api key so let me just type key and key is equal to let me type some random words okay so this is our api key and let me add another one let me say name and name is also equal to let me just type uh, Phyllis here so you can actually have more api keys depending on the type of project you are working on but let's just have name and key okay and over here to use pydantic to manage our api keys we need to import a uh, pydantic setting so we we'll say from pydantic underscore settings we are importing the base settings so we'll be using this base setting to manage our api keys so to manage api keys first of all we are coming down here and what we will do is to uh, create a class and we'll call this class settings but you can call it any name at all so i will call it settings and this settings class will inherit from the base settings okay it will inherit from the base setting and over here now you have to type the names of your api key but one thing you must be mindful about is that the names must be the same names right here okay so if you have type key here is equal to this over there you need to type the same thing so since we have key and name we'll type key here and we'll say okay the type of key we have should be what string then secondly we also type name and we also say the type of name is also string so if you have an integer let's say we have id we can just type id and the type for id should be int so we can go back here and add id to our uh, list of api so api id is equal to int and let's just type some dummy numbers right here okay so now we have uh, given the layout for our keys that we have we have listed them below so from here you have to create a config class so create a class called config and this config class will help you to locate your environmental uh, file so dot, the dot env file so what you type here is to type env underscore file and this should lead to uh, your dot env file so our dot env file is in our root directory and is in a file called dot env okay there are other things that you can add if you want to add the encoding type then you can add env file underscore encodings and this is equal to utf8 so if this is the type of your encoding you have used you can just type it there and finally you can also specify case underscore sensitive as uh, true okay so case sensitive is equal to true and what this means is that whilst reading our api key it will consider either the lower case or upper case so yeah so when you specify case sensitive is equal to true it will take that into consideration and over here i think case sensitive i didn't spell it well there should be i here case sensitive okay i think that should be correct and that's all so um that's all this is all you need to type and now to use this you can create an instance of this so you can come over here and call this your keys and your keys is equal to these settings okay Th this is all you need to do so if let's say you need your api key you can just uh, type uh keys dot api okay so let's check here we have okay the name is key so it should be keys dot key okay so let's just have our keys dot key and we can print this so let's just wrap the whole of this into a print statement and see if it can retrieve our api key for us 
so i'll quickly print this put this here put it inside and uh i'll run this and let's see so you can see we have gotten our api key right here and when you look at the api key you can see it's the exact same thing so this is how you can manage them efficiently and you can retrieve them in your application anytime you need them and uh, one thing about this is that you are not exposing this m file okay at the end of the day you are not exposing anything here you can just use this particular thing to uh, manage all of them and you can access all of them just by their name so you can do keys.id to get the particular id so if i print here you can see we have the id i've defined in the environmental file yeah so these are some of the things you can use the pydantic library to do and these are the main things it can help you to achieve to validate data to uh serialize data and finally to manage uh settings okay settings management these are the most important things you can use the pydantic library in python to do so this is the end of uh the pydantic crash course let me know what you think let me know if you have any questions leave them in the comment section and i'll address them as usual the link to this code will be in the video description and thanks for watching